Uh, my name is Leanna Marilau. I'm a PhD student in biomedical sciences here at OSU CHS. And today my poster presentation will be on the histological insights into the neomorphic preparietal bone in dicyanin on therapsids. This project was a part of my undergraduate research done at the University of Washington. So dicynodonts are ancient mammal relatives from the middle Permian to the late Triassic, which is about 260 to 210 million years ago. They're pretty funny looking animals, as you can see from the drawing on the right, and they're well known for their beaks and two upper tusks. The bone we'll be looking at in particular is the preparietal bone. It's the element colored in black on the image on the right. It's a neomorphic or novel bone, meaning that it did not appear previously in evolution in earlier synapsids. It's a midline unpaired cranial element, which is unusual for most cranial bones. It independently evolved in three distantly related therapsid groups, which are dicynodonts, biomersuchians, and gorgonopsians. And today we'll be looking at this bone in dicynodonts. The preparietal has not been histologically investigated before, so it could reveal information about how it developed. This project used a method of paleohistology, which is cutting into fossils to create thin sections to look at under the microscope. Through this, we can see microanatomy to infer development, growth, and other biological features. In this project, we have two partial dicynodont skull roofs, which are pictured on the right. We made five coronal thin sections through each skull roof, and the red lines show approximately where the cuts are made. And on the far right, you'll see a picture of me cutting one of the skulls on a tile saw, showing you a part of the process of how these thin sections are made. Here we have a couple of the thin sections that we made. On the left-hand side of the screen, we have the sections for diectodon, which we believe to be a mature specimen based on the size. And on the right, we have the sections for Lysosaurus, which we believe to be a juvenile specimen based on histology. And today I'll be focusing on two features that we found in common between the two specimens. The red arrow is showing an interdigitated suture that the preparietal forms with the underlying frontal and parietal bones on the ventral side. And then the red box is showing an area of highly vascularized fibril lamellar bone on the ventral side of the skull roof. We believe that this may indicate rapid growth in this direction. So to wrap up, we believe that these features in common could be shared ancestral characteristics of the dicynodon preparietal. Future histologic work should be done on the other therapsid preparietals to see what histologic features that those have. If the other preparietals have similar histologic characteristics, it could be evidence of homology. If not, then should we really be calling this bone the preparietal in all three of these groups? And this is my acknowledgments. Thank you to everyone listed here. My contact information is at the bottom of the page, so feel free to email me with any questions you may have. Thank you for listening and have a nice day.